You know there will be fireworks in the Brady briefing room when Sean Spicer takes to the podium there uh, to address the members of the media regarding the latest. And the big argument underway right now is whether or not the president exceeded his authority by issuing that temporary ban on travel from seven majority Muslim nations. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals says it will rule soon on that. And you know they'll be, pardon me, talking about it a lot today at Sean Spicer's daily briefing. We'll have that for you momentarily when it begins. In the meantime, the president is becoming increasingly frustrated by Democrats dragging their heels. He fired off this tweet last night, quote, it is a disgrace that my full cabinet is still not in place. The longest such delay in the history of our country, obstruction by Democrats. Joining us now with some political reaction, Lisa Booth, president of High Noon Strategies and a contributor to both Washington Examiner and Fox News, and Del, uh, Danielle McLaughlin, attorney and liberal commentator and author of the book, The Federalist Society, How Conservatives took the law back from liberals. Welcome to both of you. Hi, John. So, Hi, John. So, Lisa, are you making any predictions about how this court is going to rule? Uh, no, not yet. I, I mean, look, I, I think I look at it more from a political lens. And, you know, if you look at least prior to this most, uh, the president's e executive order, a plurality of voters were with him on this. I think the rollout was a little sloppy, and so that's kind of where the hang-ups are for the administration right now. Lisa, the, the law that uh, we just cited in a segment with Greg Jarrett seems to make it clear that the president has the authority to determine whether certain people should be allowed into the United States. Well, and, and that's what a lot of people with a legal background have been saying. And, and look, I think for the Trump administration from a political lens, uh, look, this is a big deal for him because this is sort of the first big uh, fight he has seen play out in the courts. So I think it's pivotal for him uh, to, to win this legal battle uh, for him both politically and, and I'll just also in the eyes of the law. So uh, also, we'll see what happens. Also on, you know, the president's rights and prerogatives, uh, Danielle, the Constitution says the Senate advises and consents on cabinet appointees, but doesn't say... Uh, that, that senators should set out to block every single one. No, you're absolutely right, John. And um, I mean, I guess the first thing I wanted to say is that this is not an historic uh, length of time. It's been 20 days since the president has taken office, and the last three of the last three of the last four presidents uh, went into March, April, and sometimes even May before their cabinet was complete. I will say that Democrats are doing what little they can to make sure that the uh, cabinet appointments are meeting their ethical obligations and their experience obligations. And I think DeVos particularly was a concern for Democrats as it relates to her experience to do the job and the, uh, the ethical concerns related to both her paperwork and the fact that she wasn't divesting fully from certain businesses. Well, I guess it's a glass half empty or glass half full because Republicans, Danielle, are saying this is all about obstruction. Uh, they just want to hamstring the president as he tries to get about the business of, uh, of administering the country. I agree, and I think that what we're seeing is what we saw with President Obama last year with the Supreme Court nomination. And I think citizens should be really concerned that we are seeing a political process that is more concerned with obstruction than getting the job done. And I think that counts for both sides. I think Republicans uh, don't have much of a leg to stand on because of the obstructionism we saw around President Obama, which ironically led to an immigration executive order, uh, which was held up in the courts and not dissimilar from what we're seeing with President Trump. Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah is of course a conservative Republican but he's been in the Senate a long time 30 years or so and here's his warning to his fellow senators about the way things are going right now listen I thought last night was off the charts the Democrats are so upset that they lost to Donald Trump they hate Donald Trump that they're trying to slow everything down stop the Senate from operating won't even let his cabinet officials through. I mean, this is the latest uh, th that I remember a cabinet official still waiting to get, uh, to get uh, approved by the Senate. And uh, it's, it's pretty pathetic, really. Uh, Lisa, as we watch uh, for Sean Spicer's appearance there in the West Wing of the White House, what do you think about what Senator uh, uh, Hatch had to say? Well, he's absolutely right, and so is President Trump. This is a disgrace. Look, on the day of President Obama's inauguration, uh, Republicans helped the Democratic Party confirm seven of his nominees. The Washington Post has said that the Democrats' tactics is an unprecedented break from Senate tradition. Uh, but look, I think that the, this is going to play out uh, politically very negatively for the Democratic Party. Rahm Emanuel recently said that the Democratic Party needs to take a chill pill 
they're not going to win back Congress in 2018, and that the party really needs to focus on moderating uh, versus fighting these losing moral battles. And I think that he's absolutely right there, because if you look at the makeup of the Democratic Party and you look at the 2018 electoral map, there are 10 Senate Democrats that are running in states where President Trump won, five of those mm. states where he won by double digits. So I think playing this level of obstructionism could potentially really politically uh, be damaging to the Democratic Party. Danielle, what do you think? Could it backfire against Democrats? I agree with Lisa completely. I think that uh, if everything is an outrage, then nothing is an outrage. Mm. And I think that Democrats need to take that to heart. I will also say, though, that there has been an unprecedented amount of activism, phone calls, protests, you name it. So the other thing we have to consider is that Democrats are actually listening to their voters and delivering what it is that certain people want. Danielle McLaughlin and Lisa Booth, thank you both. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.